Okay, so in this video I'm just going to do a bit of a follow-up on my previous video which was about a little bit of, you know, talking about the skinning and stuff of this creature and mentioning the rig and, you know, how I use a driving rig for the game skeleton or a driving skeleton for the game skeleton and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, um, so I've gone now and done just a little bit of extra rigging on it um, just added the pelvis and added some controls for the feet and I have I had the the poles there before but um, I just you know set them up to you know look like boxes um, so you can actually go into a bone and display a custom shape there and just you know make it look different um, yeah, and I've done the setup that I mentioned in my previous video where the if you look at the the origin bone there the root bone it's sticking to the ground and it's moving along as it should and there it's also sticking there so it's only moving on X um, it's actually you know simple enough you know all you know the the basic idea of it is the same as you would have done in Max. Um, so I, I actually added for the pelvis, I added a uh, an extra bone there. This isn't the original pelvis bone. This is an added bone um, that isn't part of the main hierarchy. It is part of this armature, but it's not part of any hierarchy. It's not parent to anything. It's just free floating. And um, the actual uh, pelvis bone is uh, just hooked up to it so that it will follow this one sp uh, completely all rotations and all movement and then the um, just unhide this and then uh, this um, the root bone here yeah, is set up to uh, follow only on X movement and nothing else and I have it uh, checked to be able to offset it so that I can have it back to zero because the pelvis is not actually on zero on X um, okay so yeah it's a little bit about the rig so the feet you know they just bones I basically just added some new bones so that I can get the pivot point where I wanted it otherwise the pivots on the ankle and I wanted it by down by the toes and uh, you know pretty simple and it's just parented so that you know the other bones would move along with it and, you know so so I've got the you know movement and rotation that's it that's all that's really needed there uh, for everything else, I, uh, I'm assuming at this stage I'm going to be using FK, and so I didn't set up any ARM IK, um, and so I'm not creating any controllers for that. I'll just grab the bones and animate them directly. Um, so I did do a simple animation for this, for testing ex exporting. This, this is basically the beginnings of what the walking cycle will be. Um, so quickly about exporting, um, something that I found is when you export the mesh and the skeleton specifically, um, uh, I, I mean I would always do select it, so I would select the mesh, just get out of pose mode, so select the mesh and select the skeleton this is the game skeleton remember and export FPX and then do selected own uh, objects so basically the same as I would do in 3d studio and uh, Um, so what I found is on, you know, I leave everything default except for on the armature, it's got this add leaf bones and that will add some end bones to, you know, to the end of any um, 
bone chain and uh, you wouldn't necessarily want that because you only want the bones in the game that you actually created and I mean Max Max has something similar but you will actually see the end bones and you can manually do whatever you want with them um, so it seems like in Blender you you don't actually get those end bones automatically you, it creates them uh, on export and I understand why but for game export you don't want that so uncheck that and then you'll get a clean export for Unreal um, on the animation side um, I would only select the skeleton because that's all I care about for animation and then um, same thing go there selected and then uh, again I would uncheck that if you know I mean this once I've exported once it'll save the settings but I mean you can probably save a preset and whatever so just make sure that's unchecked um, if at this point this wasn't unchecked I think it'll still be fine because animation can actually have more bones or less bones for that matter and it would still only it would still animate the bones that are actually matching in name you know to your skeleton so it should be okay and then on the animation uh, tab I found that unless I uncheck these two things it doesn't export so it doesn't export the animation rather so I'm not sure what the deal is there but you know I went through quite a bit of uh, searching for why the export didn't work and I finally boiled it down to these two little things um, so doing that export the animation and yeah that'll that'll pretty much work so um, it'll do the same as in 3d studio where you can even though this skeleton isn't physically keyframed it's got it's got actually zero animation on it it's purely um, constrained by another skeleton on export it will bake out this animation and although I haven't uh, messed around with this at all you know it actually says it'll bake the animation and it'll key all the bones <coughs> So, um, yeah, so I mean, uh, like I said, this is just sort of the, the beginnings of the walking cycle and, um, so in Unreal, uh, import the model and you know pretty straightforward just import it and Unreal will create the physics asset and the skeleton and so with the skeleton if you don't uncheck that create leaf bones or add leaf bones or whatever you'll have some extra bones in here that you didn't necessarily want um, you can actually tell Unreal to disable them and it probably uh, wouldn't ultimately be a big deal but I like to I like to keep things clean I like to know what I have you know I, I like to get what I what I added I don't like automatic things that I didn't you know do myself um, and importing the animation of course when you import the animation just you have to select your skeleton that you created and that's it and it, it works so, so pretty much my general workflow that I would do in Max works almost identical in Blender. So there's some slight differences, but it's really just tool based. It's not like it's not really workflow based. Um, and uh, one thing I wanted to mention in Blender that I realized is um, so you can see my keyframes go from zero to forty that's usually the sort of timeline I use for a walking cycle um, so blender would by default go like that it would start at one and um, when you pull the 
slide it to the left it would actually stop at zero not one and because I'm used to 3d studio as well I'm used to keying from zero not one um, so I keyed it from zero like I normally would to 40 and on export it would go only from 1 to 40 so I realized the little tick uh, in the walk cycle like if you don't export with the exact same frame at the beginning then at, at the end like if I if I jump between those um, okay now it's wrong but let me just pop it back to 0 so if I jump between those those should match 100% otherwise you'll get a tick in your cycle um, um, so when I exported it, it only exported from 1 to 40, so yeah, I, I guess just depends on what you're used to, but I'm used to working in max, which goes from 0, and um, yeah, so I guess just be aware of that. Um, I guess that's it, I mean, I just wanted to sort of um, show that things actually do work, my, my usual uh, workflow that I use in Max actually translates through Blender pretty cleanly in general that I've found so far um, and uh, yeah cool uh, I guess um, as usual any questions or anything you can post them and uh, yeah thanks for watching